Welcome back students to our Chemistry 1510 video notes. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off in our chapter 3, the mole and simple mole calculations packet. So we're going to work on going between mass and particles here. And in this case, we're going to need to use Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So here's the question we're going to work on. So the question is, how many atoms are in 1.000 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of uranium? So like I said, we're going to use Avogadro's as number as a conversion factor, but because we are starting with grams, we also need to use the molar mass. And so the little pathway that we're going to take is we're going to start at grams, we're going to go to moles, and then we're going to go to atoms. So we want the molar mass of a uranium is 238.03 grams per mole on the periodic table I'm using. Avogadro's number, remember, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, things in a mole. And I want to show you the two ways Avogadro's number can be rearranged so that it can be looking very much like a conversion factor. So first of all, let's talk about the things. In this case, because we're talking about uranium, uranium is an element on the periodic table, which means that the things that we're discussing are atoms. So we're going to take the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, replace the word things with atoms of uranium in one mole of uranium. And of course, we can flip this around and put the one mole on the top and the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms on the bottom. And we're going to use the conversion factor that cancels the units. So the question up here said we're starting with 1.000 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of uranium. So first thing, we want to convert from grams to moles. In order to do that, we need the molar mass. The molar mass is 238.03 grams in one mole. Because we have grams here, we need the 238.03 grams on the bottom of the next term so that they cancel out. So now we have one mole of uranium on top. Now we need to choose between our two possible Avogadro number conversion factors. And we want the one that cancels out the mole here. So what we will use is the version of the conversion factor that has moles on the bottom so that they cancel. So moles cancel with moles. And then what you'll do is put this in your calculator You'll take your 1 times 10 to negative 6, and you can either go ahead and divide that by the 238 and then multiply by the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Or if you prefer, you could take your 1.00 times 10 to the negative 6, multiply it over here because everything across the top, right, everything here is multiplied. Everything here is multiplied, and then those two are divided. So however you like to set it up is perfectly fine. You should be getting 2.530 times 10 to the 15th atoms of uranium. Let's see, I'm going to scooch this over a little bit to make sure you can see it. So times 10 to the 15th. One of the biggest errors here is an exponent error. So make sure your exponent makes sense. Remember your exponent rules from math class. Those exponent rules were when you multiply exponents, they add, and when you divide exponents, they subtract. So if you multiply a times 10 to the 23rd times 10 to the negative sixth, you're adding those two, right? So 23 plus a negative six means that you should be expecting something that is positive and um, significantly less than 23, right? So you're taking 23 and you're essentially subtracting 
uh, 6 so that you are getting 17. Notice how we have a 15 here. Well, that's because if you rewrote this in scientific notation, it would be 2.38 whatever times 10 to the second, and then you do a division where you subtract exponents. So knowing those rules can kind of help make sure that you don't make an accidental mistake. Well, I guess all mistakes are accidental, huh? Let's do one more um, where I walk you through it, and then for the final one, I'll let you pause, practice, and then we'll reconvene with an answer. So for this one, it says how many atoms are in 1.00 times 10 to the negative ninth grams of lead? And I changed my mind. Why don't you pause here, try and do this one, and then we'll walk through the final one together. All right, so we're back from pausing. Hopefully, you were able to do this one because it is remarkably similar to the one above. Um, not a whole lot of changes in there, right? Essentially, you're changing your starting number and then the identity of the atom that you're solving for. So for this final one, it's a little bit trickier because now we're not talking about atoms anymore. And I think that the formula units really throws a lot of people off. So first of all, keep in mind that formula units are essentially like the word molecule, but for ionic compounds. Right? A formula unit is just the smallest whole number ratio between ions in an ionic compound. So it's essentially the molecule of ionic compounds. Um, so the formula unit thing throws a lot of people off. So if you are thrown off by formula units, just mentally put in your head molecule in its place and that should help. So here it's telling you to convert 4 point whatever times 10 to the 23 formula units of iron 2 nitrate into grams of iron 2 nitrate. So iron 2 nitrate, let's figure out the formula for that first. So iron 2 nitrate, iron has a 2 plus charge, nitrate has a 1 minus. So we're expecting a formula of FeNO3 uh, and a 2 here. So you need the molar mass of iron 2 nitrate in order to be successful. So you can go ahead and uh, calculate that. And I got 179.8. 87 grams per mole. So when you go through this process, we're going to now kind of be flipping what we did before, right? In the other ones, we started with grams. We wanted to use Avogadro's number at the end. For this one, we're starting with a very big number of formula units, and then we're converting to grams at the very end. So we're going backward on our little like mini flow chart that we wrote at the top. So we're going to start with 4.568 times 10 to the 23 formula units of iron 2 nitrate. Okay, so when you see formula units, uh, there is no good abbreviation for this, and nobody wants to write formula units out all the time. So to make it look less offensive, I abbreviate formula units with an F and then like a super fancy U so that people can't really tell that it looks offensive at first glance. So formula units of FENO32. So now at this point, we're in formula units and we want to get to moles. The way that I know that is, remember, we said that we could go from grams to moles to atoms, right? Well, you can also just simply go to particles with Avogadro's number, where the particle could be an atom, it could be a molecule, it could be a formula unit. So in this case, that particle is a formula unit. So Avogadro's number is going to tell us that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, which I'll just say units here, uh, in one mole of iron to nitrate. Then, once our formula units have canceled, now we're in moles and it starts to get more comfortable because we can go from moles 
directly to grams with our molar mass. So one mole of FeNO32 to 179.87 grams of FeNO3. When I calculated this, I got 136.4 grams of iron to nitrate. All right, so that's between um, mass and particles. Let's go to what's next. What's next is a conversion within a chemical formula, and this can be mind-boggling. So let's start simple and work our way up. So here I have water. Inside of water, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, right? So one water molecule contains three total atoms. So one molecule has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So what if we had a dozen molecules? So if we had one dozen molecules, we would have two dozen hydrogen atoms, which is 24, and we would have one dozen oxygen atoms, which is 12. All right, so now let's talk about if we had one mole of water. So if we have one mole of water. Inside of that, we would have two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms. So usually, if students get stuck, where they get stuck is saying that <laughs> I have one mole here. How in the world can I now have three moles? And they get really confused with that. Because I think that if you're at that point, your understanding of a mole still needs to be developed. If you go back to molecules over here, students seem to understand this, right? It's like you have um, that silly bread, that pull apart bread that they call monkey bread. Imagine you had a monkey bread that looked like this. If your monkey bread looked like that, yeah, you have one piece of monkey bread, but inside that one piece of monkey bread, you have multiple parts, and you can pull off those pieces and make them into three smaller pieces. And that's kind of what's happening here, right? Your one molecule is the bigger piece of monkey bread that has three components inside of it two of the small hydrogen monkey breads and one of the bigger oxygen monkey breads. And so if you can kind of think of it like um, that, then people start to get it a little bit more. So this part is the part that really throws about half, of, half my students off. So let's start to use this. If we have this question here, how many moles of phosphorus are combined with 1.7 moles of oxygen in tetraphosphorus decoxide? So we are looking at P4O10, and we're saying we have 1.75 moles of oxygen in P4O10. How many moles of phosphorus do we have? So we can do a little conversion here. We can say, all right, I've got 1.75 moles of oxygen, and I can make a conversion factor with the information I have here. And I can say inside this molecule, 10 moles of oxygen would combine with four moles of phosphorus to require 0 0.700 moles of phosphorus. So it's like you're making a little ratio. All right, let's do another one of those. How many moles of nitrogen are combined with 2.44 moles of hydrogen in nitrogen trihydride? Well, nitrogen trihydride looks like this. And so we have 
0.44 moles of hydrogen. Now remember, this is not diatomic hydrogen because it's not alone, right? It's in a chemical compound, which means it's no longer diatomic. So we're looking at one hydrogen and we're saying inside of NH3, there are three moles of hydrogen for every one mole of nitrogen. And we're solving for the number of nitrogen moles we would need to make this ratio right. So this might seem rather silly to you. You might be thinking this is very dumb or basic or whatever. Why am I doing this? And the answer is because when you get to um, some things later on, like empirical formulas or combustion analysis, these types of ratios are going to be helpful. So let's look at our last page. We're going to consider putting the molar masses and the mole ratios that we just did together into one problem. So here's a question. How many grams of carbon are combined with 10 grams of oxygen and carbon dioxide? So let's just list some molar masses so that we have them if we need them. So we're working with carbon, 12.01 grams per mole. We're working with oxygen, 16.0 grams per mole. Uh, I mean, do you think we're going to need it? CO2 has, I think it's 44.01 grams per mole. So let's set up a dimensional analysis. What we are looking for is the mass of A is your grams whoops, of oxygen. And we want to get to grams of carbon. So what we need to do is, <laughs> oh, we have a visitor. Okay, I'm making a video. So be quiet, okay? What we have to do is set up our dimensional analysis. We're going to start with what we're given, and we're given that 10 grams of oxygen um, as our starting point. So we've got 10 grams of oxygen, and we want to take that oxygen, and we want to turn it into moles of oxygen. The way that we do that is with a conversion factor of molar mass. We know that 16.00 grams of oxygen is in one mole of oxygen. Remember, because we're talking about within a chemical compound, these are not diatomic at this moment. So now that we're in moles of oxygen, from the chemical formula of CO2, we know that there are two moles of oxygen for every one mole of carbon for CO2. And then finally, we want to get to mass or grams of carbon. So our one mole of carbon has 12.01 grams in it. So we go through this process and we calculate. We get 3.753 grams of carbon as our final answer. So let's do one more where I'm going to let you pause here and uh, work through it. And then I will write out the answer for you. Okay, so here we are. We're back with an answer. This one is a little bit harder because you're starting with a compound um, and you're asked to get to atoms of oxygen. So you had to throw in um, your Avogadro's number there and notice how when we throw in Avogadro's number, we do this type of thing that we did before up here. And then at the end, we say for every one mole of oxygen that that makes 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. So this is a really tricky question. Um, if you need some more practice on this, go ahead and go through the um, achieve textbook, right, which is called Interactive General Chemistry, um, because he really focuses in on this type of problem, and it'll be helpful for the future. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.